to share with you my favorite products from the month of March. Sorry it's a little bit later than I usually upload it, but I wasn't able to film it before I left for Puerto Rico, so I figured better late than never. Before we get started, can we just talk about iMats real quick? I'm so, so, so excited about iMats that's this weekend in New York. I've never been to the New York show, and I'm really excited to go. I will be there both Saturday and Sunday, and I will be doing a meetup for all of you guys that want to come say hey on Saturday at Alexa Persico Cosmetics. She is booth number 710. I'll link everything down below. I'll be at her booth on Saturday from 12 to 3 o'clock and I would love for you to come by and say hey and hug me and talk about random stuff. I've been using her makeup for a long time. I love her pigments. Her cream blushes are beautiful and my favorite product from her is her Naked Lip Velour. It's like one of my favorite nude lip glosses in the entire world. So come shop with me. She's going to be giving you guys all a special discount for eye match which is uh, really awesome. So please come say hey and if you see me walking around, tap me, yell at me, whatever, get my attention and I would love to meet you guys. So let's go ahead and get started in that to the favorites. A lot of the products I'm going to be mentioning are ones I took with me to Puerto Rico. It was extremely hot there. It was like 80 to 90 degrees. I was sweating. It was not a good look. So a lot of products I'm going to show you are ones that I used pretty much every single day there. I'm going to start off with some face products and first is this foundation from Revlon. This is the Colorstay Whipped Foundation. It is one of the best drugstore foundations in my opinion. Even better than a lot of high-end brands. I bought this for my trip because I'd gone through I think two jars before and I love trying new foundations so I like to go in between them and I was like I love this foundation I need to use it again I haven't used it in a few months it saved my life I wore this foundation pretty much every single day my makeup did not budge this color is great this is warm golden number 320 is the color I'm using right now and it's on my face right now it looks so beautiful. It's medium to full coverage. You don't have to use a lot of product. And my favorite way to apply this is with my Sigma F80 Flat Top Kabuki Brush. I'll also link that down below if you're not familiar. I use that with this and you just stipple it and barely buff it and it's just like flawless makeup. I also like that this doesn't feel really heavy on the face. Even though it was hot and I didn't really feel like wearing any makeup at all, I didn't feel it setting on top of the skin, but it gave me that flawless finish. So if you have not tried this foundation, it is great for people who have normal to oily skin. If you're dry, it's probably going to be too oil absorbing for you, but if you're not, you will love this. Next is the NYX BB Cream, and on here it says Perfection in A2. I got this a few months ago, and I have been using it so much. This is what I've been going for when I don't want to wear any makeup or I just want to even out my skin tone because my face is so much paler than the rest of my body. When I tan, I don't tan my face. The sun never really sees my face. And even when I'm not tan, my face is just a lot paler than the rest of my body. So I can use this and it just evens everything out. The formula reminds me of Benefit Professional a little bit, but it's a little bit more creamier. It has that really light, airy feel on the skin. And literally, like, you don't see it at all, but it still covers. For me, it's like a light to medium coverage. I had a few blemishes this month, and I would just put a little bit more with my finger, and it was fine. But if you do want something that's full coverage, this isn't going to do it for you. But I also think that this would be a great primer. It didn't make me extremely oily, but I have just been going for this every single day, putting on some bronzer, some mascara, and i um, good to go. The next essential for me is the Moda's No More Shine Spray. I've talked about this and their other one, the 10 Years Younger, so much. It's the only setting sprays I've used the past year, and they are amazing. I have the Urban Decay ones and I haven't touched them since I started using these. They're the same price and you get the same amount of product as the Urban Decay, but in my opinion these work so much better. Sometimes I spray this on my face like my life depends on it and I still have over half a bottle. It's probably right here and I've used these for almost a year so I highly recommend these if you haven't tried them. I never hear anyone talk about them and I think that they're definitely underrated. I love, love, love these setting sprays. Now on to some cheek products. First is this Illuminator by Josie Marin. I've used this in so many tutorials the past few months and I have fallen in love with this product. Usually with liquid luminizers I tend to mix them in my foundations and I don't use them on my cheeks as much just because I get lazy and it's so much easier to dip into a powder and put on my highlight. But with this I feel like it just sets so well on the skin and it looks so beautiful that I've been using it so much. It reminds me a lot of Whisper of Guilt by MAC, kind of like a liquid version. So if you don't have that and you want it, I definitely recommend giving this a try. I'll link some of my tutorials. I know in my last video I used this and it's just 
for every skin tone it'll work. It's that beautiful neutral gold and it looks flawless on the skin. My go-to bronzer has been the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil, not the milk chocolate. This is the original chocolate. It's a little bit darker and this is just the perfect bronzer for all skin tones. It's not too cool and it's not too warm and oh, it smells so good. It smells like chocolate because there's real cocoa powder in this so every time you open it you're just like in heaven and I just love it so much. This is what I have on the outside of my face right now. It's really easy to work with. It's pigmented but it's not overly pigmented so you have to worry about getting too much product on your brush. I like swirl in here and I never get too much product and it never looks muddy. You never want a bronzer to look muddy and trust me I've done that plenty of times so I really really like this bronzer and it's just one of those staple ones that if you haven't tried it, you should try it. A blush I've really been liking is one of the new Makeup Forever cream blushes. This is in the color 225 and it's a peachy pink. My favorite cream blushes are by Chanel, but they're really pricey. This is very similar to the Chanel cream blushes in my opinion with a better price point. These aren't quite as long wearing as the Chanel blushes, but they look beautiful and they melt right on the skin. I'm not a huge fan of cream blushes just because they're not always user friendly. If the formula isn't right, they tend to slip and slide or they mess your makeup up, but this formula is really nice. It sets to a beautiful powder finish and it's really easy to use, so I highly recommend this. They have a lot of colors for all different skin tones, so if you haven't checked these out, check them out. Next is a product from Anastasia Beverly Hills. All of her new products that she's launched the past year have made it into my favorites at some point or another because they have been amazing and all of her products have been on point. This is her new Pro Series Concealer. I love the packaging, first of all, which I feel like who isn't a sucker for cute packaging. I love that it's a frosted bottom because her dip brows are a clear bottom. So if you have them both, because I do use those, you can kind of tell the difference between them. These are such beautiful concealers. They're meant for all over the face. You can use them under your brows, under your eyes, on blemishes. I haven't come across a pot concealer with this formula in my life. And I think that's why it makes it so perfect for all over the face. Usually concealers that are in a pot tend to be really dry and stiff like the MAC Studio Finish Concealer. And those are good for blemishes but I wouldn't use it under my eyes because it's just too dry. When you dip your brush into this product, it melts. It's kind of like a gel cream formula and then it just slides on the face and melts into the skin and you don't even see it. My favorite way to use this product is to clean up my brows. This is what I use to clean up my brows today. Also, if you want to use it on blemishes, for those of you who have drier, acne-prone skin, you know, when you have dry skin and you have acne, it tends to get a little bit flaky, and then you put a dry concealer and it looks even more flaky. With this, since it's more hydrating, it's not going to look like that, so this would be really good for those of you. Also, I have tried it under my eyes once, so I'm not really sure how I feel about it. I tried it last weekend under my eyes, and it looked really pretty, but it did crease on me after a few hours. It wasn't horrible, but I don't think it's as good as like Pro Longwear Concealer by MAC. I use the color 1.5. This is the second shade up, and I've really been enjoying this product the past month, so I highly recommend checking it out if you haven't. Next, I have two brushes to show you. First is the Sigma F35 Tapered Highlighter Brush. If you've noticed in my tutorials, this is like the only brush I've been using to set my concealer. That area under the eye is really delicate, so I love the way that this feels underneath the eyes, and it really just sets the concealer so easily and flawlessly, and I love the way this works with powders. And then next is the Sigma E30 Pencil Brush. I love smoking out my lower lash line. It really pulls a look together, and it can be really hard. I've been there to where I'm smudging it, and it looks like I have a black eye and it went too far. This makes it really easy to use, and I just love the way it feels. Again, it's really gentle for that under eye area. I also like to use this in the crease. So if you want a defined cut crease or to add a little bit of depth to that eye, you can take this and just put it in that crease and you have definition. Moving on to the eyes, first I have a Makeup Geek eyeshadow. Surprise, surprise. This is in the color Frap. This is a little bit darker than Creme Brulee, which is one of my favorite eyeshadows, but it's not quite as dark as Coco Bear. This is a perfect transition shade. It's what I have in my crease as a transition right now. If you're medium to tan, this is going to work a lot better than like Creme Brulee or Soft Brown for MAC because it's a little bit darker, but it's still got a little bit of warmth, but it's more on the neutral side. Some false lashes I've been loving the past few months are from a brand called Esquito. I started using these a few months ago in my tutorials, but I never really said anything about them, so I figured I would show you them now. My favorite style from them is called BFF, which are these, and I thought that was a really cute name. 
These are the lashes and I'm actually wearing BFF on my eyes right now. I also like Voila Lash and Lash Lorette from them. Those are really pretty styles as well. When it comes to lashes, I usually go for really long and thick ones. These aren't quite as long as other ones that I've used, but they are really thick. But they're a lot more understated than what I'm used to, which I've really been liking. I've been loving these for more natural looks, or even if I have a really dramatic look, it just kind of tones it down a little bit because my lashes aren't like in your face long. And these are a great set for those of you who are just getting into lashes, you want something to practice with, to try out. This, the BFF, or any of the Skeeto lashes are really, really pretty. They're really easy to use and so light. Like, I don't even feel these on my eyes at all. For any of you who have really small eyelids, hooded eyelids, or... I mean, anyone can wear that, but especially for people with smaller eyes, I think you'll really enjoy these because they're not, like I said, quite as dramatic. But I have been loving these lashes. I'll link them down below if you're interested. Next, moving on to my favorite part, which are the lipsticks. I've been really into a bright, bold lip with more natural makeup the past month, so that's what I'm going to show you. First is my favorite lipstick of the month, and this is by NYX. This is their matte lipstick in Indie Flick. It's a bright, vibrant red with a little bit of an orange undertone, but it doesn't make your teeth look yellow. Sometimes orange lipsticks can do that, but this doesn't do that on me. I brought this with me to Puerto Rico because I didn't want to bring Lady Danger by MAC just in case it melts it or something, and I haven't worn this lipstick in probably like a year. I've had this forever, and I was like, oh, I'll go ahead and bring it. Maybe I'll wear it. I wore this like three days of my trip, and I love it. The formula isn't as matte as Lady Danger by MAC, but the color is pretty much dead on. The formula is a little bit more creamy, so it's more comfortable to wear, but it doesn't budge. I wore this through eating, and it was fine. I didn't even have to touch up. And when I did touch up, it didn't flake or, like, get weird. Sometimes matte lipsticks will get weird when you reapply, and they start to, like, flake or peel off. This is perfect, and it's really affordable. Next, I have a bright pink lipstick, and this is Maybelline's Fuchsia Flash. I also wore this on a picture on Instagram the past month, and I love the Vivids collection. All the ones with the bright orange lids are from their Vivids. They're so creamy, they're so pigmented, and they do leave kind of like a stain behind once they wear off. So I've been loving this lipstick. It's got a cool undertone, so it makes your teeth look super white, and... You can't go wrong with good drugstore lipsticks. Next is another drugstore lip product. You guys should be so proud of me. This is the Rimmel Show Off Lip Lacquer. I know in some places it's called the Apocalypse. This is in the shade Luna, which is a baby peachy coral shade. I did a video on these last summer and I pulled it back out because I've really been into like coral and orange lips. And uh, I love this. I used it in my dewy skin tutorial. It's a beautiful shade. I've also been really enjoying this lip pencil from Motives this month. This is in the shade Neutral. And this is what I have on under my lip combo today. I'll link everything I'm wearing down below. I love these because they're so creamy and pigmented. And they're very comparable to MAC's lip liners. This is similar to like Subculture or Strip Down from MAC, which... Strip Down is my favorite lip liner for MAC. It's a little bit more pink, but they're so easy to use. And again, I feel like it's another underrated product I never hear about. So I wanted to share these with you. And then next is a nude lipstick. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this on my channel. I probably have. But I haven't used this shade in forever. This is Myth Lipstick by MAC. I've been wearing this so much the past month. I've been wearing this over a neutral lip liner. And then I'll put a colored gloss on top. And it just creates like a pastel version version of that shade. So like if you want a coral or a baby pink or even a purple on top of this, it makes it into like a very light sheer version of the lipstick. And even with a nude lip gloss, I love this color. So those are all my favorites for the month. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you did like it. Also again, I can't wait to meet those of you who are going to IMATS. Please comment down below and let me know you're going. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next video.